Welcome back to TFL Studios. We have an exciting episode for you today. Of all places, we're in Nebraska at Husker Harvest Days. Now, why is Kawasaki at Husker Harvest Days? We want to thank them for bringing us here. But you know a lot of farmer and ranchers use Kawasaki products on their farm. We're going to see a lot more than just Kawasaki here. So come along with us as we walk around Husker Harvest Days 2022. So we know that TFL uses drones on their video series, but now this is a drone. Check this out right here. They've got like they've got several different sizes of them, but they use them in the agribusiness for spraying. That way you can spot spray certain areas. This is pretty cool. That is a big drone. All right, TFL, you know we have a skid steer, and I've got a rock bucket similar to this one, but this is a new catch that I've never seen before. It's got these little conveyors that will pick a rock right out of your field and throw it in your bucket so you're not scooping dirt, because the way, way a rock bucket works, you go into the dirt, you lift, you dump all the dirt out, your rock stays in there. This one's throwing some of the big ones right in. This is pretty cool. So here we are at the booth for Big Iron. Now Big Iron is just more than just selling big trucks. I think they originally started out selling farm equipment, then construction equipment, then big trucks over the road. Then they went into real estate and even classic cars. They've got quite a selection right here of all kinds of equipment that they sell online, exclusively online. Apparently they started as an auctioneer, like the old tile auctioneers that talk real fast, and then transitioned into strictly online sales. It's pretty cool what they sell. All right, we're here with C5 Manufacturing at the Husker Harvest Days. Now this is Mark. Yes, sir. Mark, you're selling bale beds, right? Yes. Is that the ter correct terminology for what they are? Yes, sir, that is and correct. Term. What's the real use of a bale bed? It is to pick up the big round bales that farmers use, that they use with their uh, balers, uh -huh. to feed to their cattle. And so it just makes a quick and easy way to get it on the truck to take it out to the, to the animals to feed? Yes, it's an option is to get posing to getting your high dollar tractor out and putting the hours and, and the time on it. Then yep. you can use your truck that you're gonna go to town and get coffee in anyway. There you just go. Just throw a few bales on it, go feed, then run to town. Now do a lot of farmers leave the bales in the field during, during the winter time and then go pluck one or two? Or Usually they stage them. Do they? They okay. either have a, a staging area or um, they take them to the house, so it's convenient. Right. Yeah, and then you can just back up to your, your stack of bales, yeah. get one or two. Now, how many can you carry on a bale bed? Typically two. Two, yeah. Uh, the bigger trucks that are longer, you can get three. Yep. You know. So, so show us how a bale bed works. So the basic concept is uh, we are equipped with electric over hydraulic motors. Okay. Uh, we offer an optional wireless. So it's not PTO driven, it's electric driven. No, we offer engine driven. Hydraulic is an option. Right. But for 90% of the 
work that you need to do with a it's bale. All electric. It's just electric. Yeah, it's just usually, simpler, easier. It's simpler, it's easier. The parts uh, are out there. You don't to buy. have to get under the hood and replace yeah. some of the belts or anything like that, you know, yeah, any right. components. So nice. So it's pretty uh, pretty basic. This has uh, what's called independent arms, so they can move independently. Can they? And we also have it where they are phased or synchronized. Depends on if you get lined up right to the bale. Yeah. You, you can still grab it. Yeah. With me, yeah. I'm not very good backing up. <laughs> so if right. you hit that, get the side, get there, and you're not right, you can take that arm and can push that bale over. And you can bring the other arm and then in and center pick it, it up. To and center it to get it on the truck center. Yes, and yeah. center it, getting it yeah. on the truck. Now, you always put them on a one ton truck, or is it three quarter ton truck? Three quarter ton and up. And up, okay. Yeah. Well, show us how this one works, Mark. So I'm going to pretend we'll go ahead and do a unload. So we're going to come down. So we're going to back in the truck up uh -huh. to a bale. And then you would do a out, which you'd already have it out so you could get to the bale. Uh huh. Then you would do the in. Then you're going to squeeze. Yep. And you're trying to get the center of the bale. Yeah, the center of the bale. Uh huh. As close so as possible. So you have to be good at looking in your mirrors. You have to get good at. at backing up, yeah. which I just said I'm not. So. <laughs> right. And then you just do a load. Now, how big a bale can this lift, Mark? These can lift up to 3,000 pounds. Can they? Wow. You know. And then it'll set it on the bed. And it would set it on the bed, so it'd be about right there, you okay. know, the center of the bale, maybe a little higher. And then if you're going to get a second one. Where are you, you going to put it? Well, what you would do is you would go out, then you come, now the bed, that first one's sitting on the bed. Yep. And so now you're going to come back, you're going to get the second one. Back up to the second back one. Back up to the second one. And as you're backing up, you're doing running the arms. Yep. So we're going to, for time, we're going to say we already got them. Going to pinch it again. Yeah. And then you're going to load it, but this one will not go all the way. You're just going to pull it's it into pull the other one. going to pull it up to the other one, snug yeah. it up there. Will it hold it there? Yes. Without strapping it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you can head down the road. That's right. And go feed. And go feed. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you, Mark, for showing us how these work. You're welcome, What, do you, what truck do you prefer to put them on? I'm put you kind on the of spot a, here. Yeah, I'm more of a Ford guy. Are you? More of a Super Duty. Sweet. Yeah. Nothing wrong with being a Ford guy. No, no. Yeah. I'm currently driving a, a GMC. Oh, I, you I are. drive what the company provides. So. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, thank you, Mark, for showing yeah. us how it works. Thank you, Dave. Uh -huh. All right, we're here with Tim from Harsh. Now, Harsh is a Colorado company. Been there for how many years, Tim? Been there, we established in 1948. Wow, 1948. Now tell me, I know you manufacture more than just one product, but what's your big product that you make? Our big product mostly is the feed mixers that we sell to the feedlot and the dairy industries. We right. also do hydraulic hoists for dump trucks. That's right. That was what started the company. Oh, was it? Okay. So that's typically our backbone, but the mixer division outgrew that. You know, probably 25 years ago, and, and yep. it's a little bit bigger yep. now. And so, so, your main customer is the the mid-sized farmer. He's not got a great big operation, or do you do great? No, big our operation? main customer is a commercial feed yard. Oh, they are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. These are some of the smallest units we make that you see here. Oh, really? One of the reasons for that is they're easier to get to a show. Yeah. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. This is a 575 cubic foot truck mount. It's the largest mixer we can put on a single axle truck effectively, Right. we make them up to 1,400 cubic feet. So a single axle truck's good for maneuverability yes. inside of a feed yard, yep. but you make them even bigger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We make some that have to have triple axles on right. and it'll haul right. about 45,000 pounds of yep. feed. And so what the what the mixer does is you can put a variety of feed, you, you dump it in with a loader I'm yes. assuming, yep. yeah. Uh, you're scooping your silage, your yep. grains, whatever, you mix them on site. Yep. Uh, so that you keep them separated until they'll, the time of the feeding. Yep, they'll yeah. measure a balanced ration through the scale system that's on it, so they'll weigh all the ingredients off the payloader, you know, try to get an exact batch, mix it right. up, they'll go feed it. Yeah, that would be handy to be able to know yeah. how much you're putting in. Yep. So every one of them has a, have a scale on yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's yep. cool. And uh, what's the, so do they have them for small trucks do you make them for like we the do. one ton trucks we put them on as small as one ton trucks do you you know for the we don't do a lot of those but uh you see a few of those in the university in the research yards you know gotcha. they want to do small batches like you know 1500 pounds or even less we have one guy doing 50 pounds right yeah you know. and you like international 
What truck do you like? We like we like what the customer has the best service uh, on. Okay, so you, know, you put them on anything. We'll put them on any truck there is. Uh, we, I got you. We can't say we have a favorite. You know, they're all spec, very very similar. A lot of them even have the same engines. All oh, of them they? almost have the same transmission. So Which is? We we like the Allison automatic transmissions. Uh -huh. Yep. And the Cummins engine is kind of the favorite for our application because of the low end torque and the durability. Right. Yeah. You know, Cat kind of went out. They were good for a long yeah. time, but, yeah. uh, they quit, but they pretty much the Cummins the and the motor. Allison you can get in any combination, yeah. Yeah. you know, whether it's an international freight liner. And farmers are typically used to working on Cummins, and of course yes. parts are available yep. everywhere. Yep. So what motor do you usually put in them? In these, we'll have a nine liter engine, usually right at 300 horse. You yeah. know, before emissions hit the diesel engines, we could do that with 170 horse. Right. You know, and now we're right at 300 to get the same job done. It's Everybody like put, says that. <laughs> put a tater in a pipe is what they did. But, yeah, unfortunate, but it's a world we live in now. It is, yeah. yep. Well, Tim, I appreciate you talking to us about what you do, and uh, we're glad that we found a Colorado company. Absolutely. Good to meet you, too. And thanks, guys. Appreciate it. You never know who you're gonna see at Husker Harvest Days. I bought some of their equipment. This is Jenkins Iron and Steel, and I love my grapple that I bought from them. I use it all the time. So I wanna highlight some of the things they do. I mean, check out this grapple right here. I mean, that thing could crush anything. So we've got this big heavy duty brush grapple. We've got a dirt bucket. This is similar to the one that I have, except this is for dirt and not, not just for rocks. This, of course, is a tine. Then if you want to have a backhoe, but you can't really call it a backhoe, I call it a front hoe on your skid steer so you could dig holes. You could put a boom or a crane on your skid steer. Then look at these massive snow bucket. That way you could push a whole lot of snow. And then of course we have bigger grapples and regular buckets and land planes. Oh, and a stump grinder right here. And this is called a soil conditioner. I need one of these. This is kind of like a land plane, rototiller, soil scraper all wrapped up into one. I think I need one of those. All right, here at Husker Harvest Days, I found Marcus. And Marcus is with this tire. What's the name of your tire company? Evolution Wheel. Evolution Wheel. And it's just not any ordinary wheel and tire. These are, of course, for large pieces of equipment as well as pivots. Tell us what you make wheels and tires for, Marcus. So we have our pivot line of tires. That's our original pivot tire that released early this year, as well as our XT model that we just shown for the first time at Farm Progress. We're also showing it here at Husker Harvest Days. What's unique about it? So like with all our tires, what's unique about it is that the tire is actually made of individual segments that bolt onto a steel rim. And that gives you a couple of benefits. You, the tire is fully serviceable. So if you're at end of wear life, you could retread it yourself. You don't have to throw the whole thing away. Or if say in the field, in case of our pivot tire or you know, in the case of our skid steer, the operator hits something nasty. Uh, you can just service it yourself. That part of the tire that got damaged. You just, just take, take it off. You just take it off, zip a new one on, and you're back off to the races. So like this tire here has, what, a dozen segments to it? So you take that segment off and replace it, and you're back in business. Exactly. You just drop in a new segment. It's only four bolts. There's no special tools required. Just grab your impact, zip off the four bolts, drop in a new segment, and it takes five minutes to do. Now, what are those segments made of? What kind of material? Is, I'm assuming it's a rubber, plastic, what is it? Yeah, it's absolutely, it's rubber. So we're an airless tire that's made from rubber. So in the case of our pivots, it's not a plastic wheel or anything like that. And our tires, even though they're airless, they're made to compress. So all our tires are designed to compress very similar to even a pneumatic. On a pivot even on a pivot. So you can see, especially even with the pivot, it's actually meant to compress all the way down. So as the compression happens, it cleans out those, uh, the those core holes will actually just push material out right. instead of carrying it along in the I field. I see that, otherwise it just makes it for a heavy wheel. Yeah, If exactly. it doesn't push it out. Yeah. So even in muddy conditions, it'll push all that excess mud out. Exactly, so in our pivot or even in our skid steers, you know, the. Our AT series of skid steer tires, those are meant for soft ground, muddy conditions. 
and as that tire compresses, it just cleans itself out. Now, can you use that tire on pavement as well, or is it made for a specific material? Yeah, so we actually do everything in-house. So from the steel to the rubber, we yeah, have yeah. a chemist team and we make compounds for different applications. So all these tires here have a slightly different formula right. just to cater it specifically for that application. As far as our skid steers go, our AT is really for soft ground, high traction tire. It's by far one of the most aggressive all terrains on the market. And which one is that? And that one we're there? looking at our uh, HS. Okay. So that's very popular in dairy and in new construction. It's an extremely high wear tire. Huh. Uh, it's a perfect rolling circle, so you won't have any sort of chatter or anything yeah, like that. Right. But that tire there can easily last five to eight times that of a premium pneumatic. So it has a long life, and hence probably it's a, a lot more costly than a regular tire. What are we talking about in cost for that wheel and tire combo? So for the all-terrain, uh, all four tires delivered to you, that'd be 4000 And for that one there, it'd be 4400 that's not bad for all four for a skid steer. Yeah, yeah. and considering the wear life you're getting yeah. out of it, you don't got to deal with flats. You know, a lot of the people that we work with that are just using their skid steers 24 seven, as soon as we get them into a set, they get it right away. Now, what about the pivot guys? Are they realizing that not to have to maintain a regular pivot wheel, tire the rubber tire? I'm, I'm assuming they're pneumatic. A lot of them are pneumatic. Yeah, exactly. Pivots. You know, guys are, the pivot market is a really underserved market in our opinion. Um, there's, there's companies trying different things, but really what we're trying to do is address the pain point of farmers. You know, yeah, if you haven't yeah. had to change a pivot tire in a while, maybe you don't remember what a pain in the butt right. could be. Yeah. But there's, especially here this year in Nebraska, um, where pivots have just been running nonstop. Yeah. There's just there's a lot of tires needing need to be changed, and that just eats up a lot of your day. It's a lot of labor. Mm especially in chest high corn. So with something like this, you know, you still get compression in that tire, you still get flotation, but you're just not gonna have to worry about flats, the even if it hits something nasty in field. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a really cool design. I really, I mean, I've heard about some of these tires, you know, they're non-pneumatic tires that are out there, but that's all you do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So all our tires are airless, they're all serviceable. So that right there, it just deals yeah. with a lot of the issues of tires. Yeah, being able to pull one of those segments off and replace it, yes, that's something I didn't even know existed. Thank you for showing it to us, Marcus. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got a bed here that caught my eye, a Bessler bed, and I've got Cliff here to tell me about it. Okay, Cliff. Why don't you tell me why this bed is a little different than all the other big builders? Because it caught my eye because some things are different. Tell me about it a little bit. A couple of features on our bed. Um, one is all the toolboxes. They're a module box, so they could be added at any time. The top mount boxes, you could, you could uh, have different arrangements for them or take it off if you have damage and replace them. The underneath ones can be removed when they do the install. Makes it a lot easier. To do the install, you can pop them out and then put them back in afterward. Mm -hmm. We do offer different width boxes as well. The ones on this bed, this is a short bed that's uh, that's 80 inches across, a narrow bed. So they went with the 15 inch boxes. That gives them about 50 inches in between, uh, which most want to have at least 48 inches between sure. the boxes. So, so like, you can put your four by eight sheet of plywood in there. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So like on a dually, uh, it's a little bit wider bed, and then it would be more common to go with maybe a 20-inch box. And we offer the 20-inch wide boxes too. So this is a 15-inch box right here. Correct. Yep. As far as the depth weighs from here to here. Yep. Yep. And then the same way with this tall box. The same with the tall box. Uh -huh. And this is 15. We and it does have a full. You can put a full set of wrenches up here and uh, like screwdrivers or whatever down there. We have optional drawers. Oh yeah, uh, I didn't you can see have that. it all opened up or like this has our two drawers set up, which is they're pretty popular. Uh, so we offer either one, two or three drawers in this area. And this these can be added later on as well. So, right, because this is modular. It breaks right at this point. So you can just have the bed. You can add one, two lower boxes as well. Mm -hmm. So this is modular, this piece right here. Yep. These boxes. bolts have been popped out. Popped out. Them. Gotcha. And then I, I like this profile right here. I think this is nice. Something about it's a little different than your other typical boxes. 
Right. So, and yep. you make these where, Cliff? We make them in Cambridge, Nebraska. Sweet. So Best right here, industries in Cambridge, Nebraska. Well, thank you for showing it to me, Cliff. All right. Appreciate Thanks, it. David. Hi, we're back at the Kawasaki booth, and of course they have the ranch edition right here that I would love to have this one, leather seats. But we want to thank Kawasaki for not only giving us the mule for all these months that we've used extensively, but they also took us through the tour of the factory. Go to TFL and see TFL Studios, and you can see that video of everything they do at the Kawasaki factory. They've been here since the 1970s, hard to believe. But thank you for coming along and hope you've enjoyed all these little tidbits that we found at Husker Harvest Days. And we'll see you next video.